hi guys welcome or welcome back again to my youtube channel if you're new here you're welcome uh, my name is Bumi Olatunji and I make videos about med lab science so if you're interested in med lab science definitely click the subscribe button I'm a part of my family so guys today's video I'm so excited about it because I'm going to be talking about the pathway of a med lab scientist in the United States of America so basically how you could go to the United States of America to work as a med lab scientist trained okay as a foreign trained medical laboratory scientist so i'm going to be inviting a colleague of mine who has um started his own process to work in in the united states of america so he's going to be briefing us about like the exam because this one actually requires you to pass an exam the exams and every other thing that you'll be needing okay so without further ado let's get into the video thank you so much for joining us um it's really an honor to have you on our channel so with the conversation i had with you you just finished writing your ASCPI. I i will i'll write the full like what the um the abbreviation stands for anyways on the screen so that's like an exam that you need to pass if you want to work in the united states of america as a med lab scientist yes of course so from what um conversation we've had we also made mention of the fact that if you are trained in the United States, you are, what you will write is the ASCP without the I. The I there stands for international student. So people who train outside the United States are going to write the ASCP. So now, can you just yes. tell us about like the process to actually apply for this exam? What do we need to have to be able to like be legible to write the exam? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. The exam. The first thing you need to do is that you must determine your examination category and your roles. Okay. This is contained in a document on the SCP website. You must first determine your examination category and your roles. The it comes in this category. If you're interested in taking the generalist exam that covers the entire MLS syllabus, you can take that. Okay. If you are interested in taking a technologist exam in chemistry, hematology, based on your area of spe exactly. specialization, you must determine your category. Mm -hmm. Then you determine your route. What the route means is that you can use either your internship experience mm -hmm. to apply for the exam, or you can use your years of working experience to apply for the exam. Once you are done, the next thing is to complete an online application. Then you submit your payment online. The third step is for you to gather the necessary documents based on your exam category and your roles. Then your documents will be reviewed by ASCP. After the review process, you will be uh, you'll be emailed a document called the admission notification. That is a document that will contain your eligibility for the exam and the date uh, of your eligibility. So the next thing for you to do is to schedule your exam at a convenient time, at a, con at a convenient day, on a convenient day. So the exam is taking year all year round. You can schedule at any convenient day for you to take the exam. Once you're done, with the exam, you would uh, you will see your preliminary uh, results, the pass or fail. Okay. The four days later, your score will be emailed to you. Thereafter, you wait for five to eight days to get your world certificate, which is the equivalent of the uh, the license. That's the entire process in summary. Okay, um, you talk about transcript evaluation. What part, where does this come in? Uh, thank you so much. The first thing for you to do to be, to be deemed eligible for the exam is to verify your documents. The body needs to know that you are a trained medical laboratory scientist. So the first thing you need to do is to evaluate your transcript or your results by an ASCP approved agency. And you must take a course by course evaluation. It must contain your subject breakdown and a statement of equivalence. 
So a list of our approved agencies can be seen on the ASCP website. Okay. So do you contact the agency and then send your transcript to them? Uh, the first thing, you have to determine which of the agencies you want to use. Okay. West is more common. If you are using West, you have to create an account with them, choose your package, then you get a reference number, then you go to your school, apply for your transcript, you attach the reference number, and your document will be sent in a sealed envelope to the agency. That is how to go about it. So once the agency is done evaluating your transcript, it will be sent to the ASCP Board of Certification. Okay, so you're sending this like through courier service, like um yes, you can use a courier service. Your school can decide to use an email depending on okay. Okay, so that's just like an overview of the exam. Um I'm I'm going to like leave the website on the screen so that you could go on the website and check like with all the information that he has mentioned. So now after you pass the exam, that's the next question I want to ask. Like when you pass the exam, it means that you're now um you're now registered. Like you're now uh, hmm? a certified medical laboratory scientist. In the United States. Yes. So that means you can now apply for jobs. Yes, you can apply for jobs, but before you be able to apply for jobs, there's one other step. It is known as the visa screen stage. You have to apply for what is known as a visa screen with your ASCPI license. So okay. once you get a visa screen certificate, then you can start applying for jobs, then apply for your visa. All right, so... Um, like, how long do you think this whole process, like, in a scale of, like, okay, for the exam, for instance, if you want to write this exam, how long do you need to prepare for your exam? It's dependent on your strength and your exam category. Well, I think three to four months will be sufficient enough to prepare for the exam. Three to four months? Yes. Okay. So, um, from the process of like, okay, before the exam, yeah, we have to use this um, transcript evaluation. So, like that transcript, yes. how long does that even take that one? The transcript evaluation, it depends on so many factors. It depends on the agency you be you are using. Okay. If you are using West agency, for example, it depends on when your school sends the transcripts to them. Okay. Then when West acknowledges your transcript, they will send back to your school for another stage known as the verification stage. So your school it will have to reply West within six weeks. Okay. So the entire process can take months. Okay, so if you're an agency like ECE, yes. If you're using an agency like ECE, you can be done within a month. Okay. Because it doesn't have the verification stage. Okay. Well, is that one more expensive? <laughs> no, it is not. West is actually more expensive okay. than this. Okay. This is less than two hundred dollars. West is about two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. So that is just basically like an overview. Now I want to ask about the cost, like. Like how much does the whole process cost? Wait, before you answer that, that means for what you said, you need um okay, you need about four months to prepare for the exam and about let's say two months to get your transcript evaluated. So you need about six months to officially as in to start the process and finish writing the exam, about six months. So, yeah, six months. Yeah, okay. So now the I want to talk about the cost, like how much does it cost? It depends on on the amount you are getting in dollars. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Let's no, say the amount in dollar because you know the rates are fluctuating. So, like, I mean, the amount in dollar. I didn't get that. Please come again. Okay, I said I just need the amount in dollar because you know the currency is actually fluctuating. So, in dollar, like, I can't. Watch. The Exam is ninety five dollars. 
If you are going for waste evaluation, that will be an extra $255. Then for the visa screen stage, that is $590 for the visa screen stage. Okay. The exam is $95. Um, yes. evaluation about $200. Then the visa screen about yes. $600 or $500. Five, $90. All right. Um, but I think that's basically it about the process. Like you said, um, I want to just like summarize it. The first step is for you to get your transcript evaluated, which could take like yes. about um, two months mm -hmm. or depending on the agency you use. Then after you get that evaluated, you sit or start preparing for the exam. The exam could take you at least four months to prepare for it. So once you pass, you now start applying for visa screening. And then when you get your visa screening, you are now like, you can now start applying for jobs in the United States of America. Okay, that's, that's cool. So, um, yeah, I think this, this um, is there any other thing like maybe I'm not touching that, you know, you would like to see concerning the whole process? Uh, I think the other thing is, it depends on the states you would like to go after your certification. Okay. Some states will still require you to write their state like sexual exams, about 12 states. But most other states, like about 48 other states, will not require you to write any other exam. You are eligible to apply for jobs and get their working visa. Okay. Hey. All right. Well, the process is not an easy one. You know, it's, mm. although it's kind of strange, <laughs> it's but, it. it's United States. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's kind of straightforward, but then it's not easy both financially and then uh, the exam. Okay, yeah, about the exam, like, would you say the exam is easy? Would you say it's hard? Is it a theory exam or is it just CBT? It's true. That's true. about the exam. How does the exam look like? It's an MCQ, multiple choice question. But it's a computer adaptive testing. So the the computer automatically uh, <laughs> detects the strength of the examining and it tailors the questions to the strength of each okay, so individual. You're failing, you're failing to like try to like give you easier questions. Yes. Okay. Once if you're failing, you get easier questions. If you're passing, you get other questions. But you must meet up with the required minimum pass score of 400 over, for you to be... Over what? Yeah, over 999. Okay. The, the pass, I think the pass score is actually fair. Kind of fair. It's very fair. Yeah. 400. Yeah, 400 over like... Oh, that's almost 1,000. So, 1,000. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. So, we sit for the exam and all of that. Anyways, um... Are there like some recommended materials that we could use to study from this exam? Yes, there are lots of re recommended materials. You can get the reading list on the ASCP website, or you could just use the books that people have been using over the years. And lots of persons have recommended, like the Success in Clinical Laboratory Science by Donatile Mann. You can use Bottom Line Approach by Parts gyro. You can and use the Polanski flashcard. Yes, all these books are online. You can download them online. You can get the BUC compendium. It was written by the BUC board. Then you can get the BUC past questions. You can use the Medical Laboratory Science Review by Robert R. and other supplementary materials. Okay, so, so there are a lot of I want to ask something now. Like you're a chemical pathologist, like your major. So your exam yes, was like purely clinical chemistry or, or uh no, I took the generalist exam. As a matter of fact, I my chemistry questions were not how to fight. Most of my questions were from blood bank and <laughs> microbiology. Okay. All right. That's that's cool. That's cool. I I'm trying to see if there's any other thing I would want to well, yeah, there is a Facebook page. You sent um, a link. There's a Facebook page, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's a Facebook page. 
All right. Um, thank you so much for your time. Really You're welcome. 